Hi guys and welcome to my channel again. Um, in our previous episode we took apart a G6 um, and I rebuilt it. So today we've got the luxury of taking apart a Ultimate G Diamond Edition. So that's got the extra power switch, um, which I'll quickly show you. So it's got the extra power switch there, which I think Kirby put on as a bit of a gimmick. Um, because you've got two switches in the front that, that do the, the uh, extra power when you put the hose in anyway. So um, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to strip it apart, get it all cleaned, um, look at the bushes, change the bushes, change the fan, um, we're going to re-grease um, the tech drive adjust and we're going to look at our, um, lubricating the uh, tech drive adjustment, give that a bit of a clean and, and see what she's like inside. Um, I don't think it's been serviced since new so um, these were out in, if I can just look at the date, uh, can't see, I haven't got my glasses, what? yeah can't see, I haven't got my glasses, uh, two seconds, I'll lift it, yes. So, like I was saying, these were released, this is an 04, so this was made in August 04. If you're not sure how to find what date you or Kirby was made, just look on the side here. On this one we've got an 08, which means the 8th month, and um, an eight, and then 04, which is 2004. So this is, what's that, 2004, 15 years old. So 15 years old, still going strong, um, just been brought in for a bit of a service and a clean, and yeah, we'll check the... Check how the bushes are doing after 15 years, and check how the fan's doing, um, change the fan, change the bushes, because um, I think after 15 years they'll probably do need changing, and then we'll give everything a clean, and then you'll see me strip it, um, put it all back together. Okay, so uh, catch you soon. So, welcome back guys. Um, you're not going to get to see my head shutting, because um, obviously I'm zooming in the Kirby, but uh, yeah, I'll explain each detail as I go through it, for those of you who have never took one apart. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. You just gotta remember where all the bolts go. Okay, so first up, we'll start by removing the lead. Okay, so what you've got is a little Torx bolt just there, just at the front of it. So it's just literally undo it, like so. Uh, screw off in. Okay. Just make sure you keep your screws separate. If you've, if you've never took one apart before, get some little boxes and put them in. Or, or get a bit of cardboard, mark up where they came from, and just put them in, in a little hole in the cardboard. So, yeah, we've undone the screw, so we literally push the plastic forward, pull it down, and eight it pops, and out comes your lead. Okay, next one, we're going to do the top one here. And if you can see, okay, which holds. The actual lead in there. Well, I'll tend to keep all the top screws together um, just for ease. I mean, I've took that many apart now, I could probably do blindfolded, but I wouldn't tempt it. Uh, okay, so that's the one at the back, which that came out of there just above your tech drive. Now, to get this plate out, if it doesn't come out loose, then you literally get a screwdriver, just put it in there, and just give it a bit of a lift, and it will release it. Lift it up, pull it out, because what you don't want to do you snap off those two little plastic bits there. So that's that, leads off. So the lead, I tend to clean the leads, just clean the leads with a bit of a wet wipe. Literally hold it, run your wet wipe down there a couple of times and just get all that grub and grime off it. Okay, so next we're gonna undo two screws at the back. And that one there. to one side and then what we do is lift the front and we've got two short screws just there okay now these screws are actually tapered so you shouldn't get them mixed up they've got a tapered edge um, to fit in like a countersunk edge to actually fit into the top end of the Kirby like so okay just under like that Okay, and put all your plastic bits, just keep your plastic bits to one side 
so ready to put in your wash okay so as you can see yeah we've got a bit of uh, nasty there okay so I was always advised um, that when all dust and grime starts coming out of here obviously the curb is ready for a service um, this one obviously is um, I'll give you a shot of the inside in a minute so okay. I'll just lift her up a bit so I'll take this head off the belt should probably be off anyway no the belt's not off so I want your belt off and I'll also show you later how to adjust the height on your brush roller okay so we take that off and if you guys can see just bring it close so you can actually see there is I'll get my phone and just put this on the torch on it so you can actually see the grime that's actually in there so I'll do that down. okay so as you guys can see there's a lot of grime and dirt in there so what I'll do is I'll vac this out as I go and then obviously I'll take it in the garage later and blow it off with the compressor and then clean all the bits that need cleaning so I'll just turn the torch off okay so what we'll do is we'll quickly just go over this with the centria and a duster brush just to suck the majority of it off so it doesn't go everywhere that centria is not turned on two seconds So your plastic attachments on your top, literally slide those off, put those to one side, that gets us ready to give that a polish. Next up is we'll drop, put that back there, and we'll drop out the tech drive. So tech drive, so to drop out the tech drive, okay, it's literally these three screws on the bottom here. Now make sure your tech drive is in drive, otherwise it won't drop out. tend to put those screws, keep them to one side and then when you take your tech drive out just put it with those screws so you know where they've came from. Um, there are a few duplicated screws in here anyway but you just don't want to get them mixed up. So you can see that tech drive is moving a bit. Okay, I'm going to take it up like so, make sure it's in drive, disconnect your switch so you actually pull it off, there's a little bar there, pull that out, put that to one side for cleaning. And as we drop it down, literally there's a belt, you've just got to take that belt off there. There's no set adjustment on these belts. Okay, so you just lift that off and out on your tech drive, like so. And as you see, we've got a bit of crap here. Take this brush off, a few dog ears. Um, obviously that's going to need cleaning and re-greasing. So we'll just give that a quick vac off at the moment, put our belt to one side so we don't lose it. And um, yeah, excuse the noise, it's gonna be noisy when I turn this head on. Okay, so those two, three bolts. We'll keep with that, what we'll do as well while I'm here is we'll take this out. So this is your drive and neutral. It's just one single screw, comes out again, make sure it's in drive. Keep that with that. Obviously that one's got a washer on, so it's not hard to get to know where it comes from. This then will pull out like so. Okay, and as you can see, it's still full of crap, all in there and all in there. Okay, so we're gonna clean that out. Then what we'll do is take that off, that pulls off like that, so just a twist and a pull, like so, 
give this a good clean and then we'll just re-grease where this literally goes in and out okay the is problems with these this one looks quite fine um, the issue there used to be with the with the G series on mainly on the G7s so probably on the earlier models I don't know if Kirby fixed it but um, what you'll get is you'll get a gap there these are actually pressed on so sometimes these used to release and come out so you either get it, get it repressed on um, or what I had to do on a previous Kirby was just buy a new switch I have seen um, where a guy's put a um, so, pardon me, where a guy's put a hacksaw cut in there and put a circlip on there to hold it on you can do that but with me I prefer to just fit a new one that's pre-pressed on and I know it's not going to cause me issues in the near future so we'll put that to one side uh, with that ready to be cleaned and our four bolts we'll just put those over here again with a tech drive bit so what I tend to do is all the, all the bolts that come out the top, I tend to put them in, in the little cover for your lead. That way you don't lose them. So they're all in one sort of area. That just makes life 10 times easier. Then obviously your tech drive is your next one. So I'll just put them next to it so I know what they are. Okay, so it's going to give us a bit of a sock out again with the sentry out. Can, what you can do is you can put, you've got another Kirby, put it on blow and you can use it to blow that out. I'm going to use a compressor because it's just a bit stronger to blow all that crap out of there. Okay, so we just put that to one side now. Alright, so next up. Okay, we're going to get this off. So, here's the big one. Okay, so this is your tech drive adjustment. So we literally undo that, two bolts. So, what I might do is upload this video and then put a speeded up version of it as well, just so there's two versions if people want to skip through. I mean, you can fast forward to whatever section you want, you're taking the Kirby apart. Okay, so that comes out of there. Get those bolts to one side. All right, now we're going to do is to undo this. So, let's take out these. What you've got is your spacer block, so under your spacer block, that sets your slide left and right. When we put this back together, I'll explain there should be no left and right movement when you put the spacer block back in. Pause that out. Okay. Now another thing with these, on some of the Centrias, the early 2010s, these were missing. So you can order them from Kirby. Um, uh, you can email Kirby or whatever, but I know there's a few of the sentries that these were missing on. So there was an issue with the handles moving left and right because there's no spacer in there. If you can't get one from Kirby, um, another thing you could do is just make one some, out of some uh, fiberglass component. Um, all, all I've done in the past, if I've had one missing, um, I know what, uh, what I did was got some plasticine, formed a mould and then made one out of some plastic resin um, to, to make an, one exactly the same shape. And it works a treat. I mean, they're only about two or three dollars from Kirby anyway. Um, and, and if you've got one missing eight centria, Kirby should replace it anyway. For a, I think it's an early 2010 model. Okay, so we just keep that to one side. Okay, because what happens is when we put what happens now, I'm going to loosen those off. That will move left and right. Okay, so that's what that space of does. It just adjusts it. Now these bearings are probably going to need greasing, um, just a bit of 3-in-1 oil or something. So we'll just take those out and we'll put those to one side as well. So we'll take those out, put those to one side with that and these just pop out. So as you can see, all that's in there is your bearings. We'll give those a clean and then put some 3-in-1 oil in there and then we put them back on, we'll make sure they're centralised to put them back in. So we'll just keep all that together. 
over there. That's that part. So now we're going to undo here. Just to take this headlight assembly out. to the right hand side for now. Okay, then we've got the two screw, longer screws in the front. So those are just up here. And these go all the way through into that headlight assembly. Am I looking right? There. So I haven't got my glasses on. Oh that's a bit tight. We'll just put to one side. Now what you can do if you're not too sure, again with the little ones, you could take them out and then put them back in the carcass, it's up to you. Because I, I know where they've came from, I just keep them all to one side. So, but again, just remember your longest bolts are the top two. Okay, and that will come out like so. Okay, now on this. There's literally two plugs, so it's one there, and then the other plug, I'm going to get my little screwdriver in. Comes out the bottom. Okay, I'm going to just put you on pause because I've got to get more glasses. Alright, so to take this headlight assembly off, what we've got here is a bit of a loop toy here. So, make life easier, we'll snap this table clip and then we'll just put it back on after. Okay, so it's just cable toward there. Just makes life a bit easier. Now what you've got is your second part for your bulb, which is on in the bottom. Now it's easier to just take these connections off first and then you can release that for your bulb. So that way. Uh, let's grab a little screw right. Okay. Two. Let's see. Grab a little screw to that. Very kind of Just grab a little screwdriver. Okay. That's three. Off. And. Just off to your power switch, that's all that is. That one's off. Okay, pull that off. That's number three. And down to number four. Now what you can do, if you're not sure with these, you can number them, one, two, three, four, just get a little marker pen or something, but when you've took them apart enough, you tend to know where they go. Okay, so now we can get to the other switch, which is your light. So again, your light assembly is free. Right, so next process, so you've got your earth strap just on the left here, so we're going to undo that. Undo two screws at the bottom, and then this whole assembly should lift out. Okay, so helps to get the right size torque. So again, just remember where they come from, guys. Um, you've got two screws with washers on, which obviously go in the top here, which we'll just put to one side. Again, I'll put those with the long ones because I know where the long ones go anyway. But again. If you're not sure, just get a bit of cardboard right where they've come from, or you could even put them back in the carcass once you've took it apart or you're cleaning it. Okay, so you just take that earth strap out, which is there. Okay. Switch on. That should just 
slide, that switch just slides out of there, like so. So that's free. Okay, should have done that earlier. That's ready for polishing. Okay, so that bit's free. So everyone done those. Then we're going to turn around. We're going to undo. Um, that's for your actual casing, so there's none on the front. This one here, you don't have to undo it, it doesn't hold the safety switch. All it literally holds is a piece of plastic that screws in here, which you'll see when we take the front off. Okay, so we've undo those two there. You've got two self tappers here in the bottom, so just support it as you undo those. Why is that loose? No, I didn't undo that, so that was already loose. So, someone at some point, wow, they're well loose. Vibrated loose, wouldn't have thought so because they're self tappers. Or someone's had a go at it. Right, so that now we want a little Phillips for there. So I'll just grab a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, on the sentry, as they, they stop putting this screw in, um, I don't know why, but it just did. So, this is just your exhaust. So we'll do that, that then you can get a little screwdriver in there and just give it a bit of a lift and it should get fingers in, pull out, there you go, out it comes. So that can be washed and a little plastic attachment there for your vent, that can be washed. So again, just put that self tapper, I'll put that there by the exhaust fan so I know where it's from. Now this should all lift out. Now that is as easy as that. Okay. So that is your motor, just needs cleaning. Fan's got a bit of damage from hairs, but it's not that bad, but I'll change it anyway. It's going to make it more efficient and get it back to the factory standards. So what I'll do is I'll give all this a blow off with a compressor, give it a good clean out. Then I'll come back show you to change the fan. It's literally a 10 mil bolt there anyway. And then all you grab is a little screwdriver. Sometimes these are loose anyway. So you can literally hold that. There you go. Is it turning? No, it's turning. Okay, so I'll need a 10mm spanner just to hold that. Okay, so I'll come back to you once I've cracked that. Right, so I've just got a little 10mm spanner held it in there. And just cracked, just cracked that so it's uh, clockwise. Okay, there we go. So that comes off. Like so. Got a little washer just there. Now when you get the fan kits, I'll show you when I sort it out when we put it back, you get all these bits so these can all go in the bin. All just and that pulls off. Now there you go. So you can see it definitely hasn't been serviced for a while. Uh, mainly a lot of dust. What I do find sometimes if people have used the sanding attachment, you get a lot of sanding dust in here as well, which can get in the motor, so yeah. That, that's your seal that actually stops it getting in the motor. So you get a new one of those, new grommet, new washer, okay, and then on the back of this fan, if you move it, there you go, there's a little plastic washer when it comes off. Okay, so there's a little plastic washer, but yeah, I'll keep this and I'll give it to the, the guy when he comes to collect it. So he's got the old fan, so you can see it wasn't that bad, but it was worth changing. Because obviously the plastic's going to break down. Alright, so as you can see, this is all ready to go in the wash. What we'll do as well, because um, we're going to regrease everything everyway. It's all corroded here, obviously, from shampooing and that. So, I mean, my advice is if you sh when you're shampooing, guys, just take 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 your head off and just give this a good clean wipe. Make sure it's dry. It will stop all this corrosion from happening. Okay, so we're just going to undo that. I mean, you, if you're just changing the fan, you can just take the front off these to change the fan. You don't have to take the motor out, but if you're going to service it, then it's worth taking all the motor out to give it a real good clean. So then we're going to do this bottom two, which is there, as you can see, one, two. Alright, now this won't come apart yet because it's silicon sealed. So we'll be putting fresh silicon sealant around when we put it back together. So just put those there, self tapper so at the front. Okay, take off the wheels. 
literally two screws. So, two little brackets, so keep those to one side, keep screwing your bracket together, that way you won't know, you won't get confused as to where they go. And all the plastic and cast, that is cast, yeah, will go there, so that just pulls up and eight logs, so, okay, you see there's loads of crap in there, so we've got, we've got a re-grease in there, Bit of grease in there, your spring, okay, re grease. Um, I had a G4, I recently changed one of these on. For some reason, it kept dropping. So, if you have that issue, you can get new ones of these from Kirby or, or online. Um, and it's just a little bit of wear in there, and it makes it jump. So, this one um, seemed pretty good when I was trying it out. I mean, we'll grease something, see how, how we go with it. I mean, it should be fine. Um, it, obviously, it's not as old as a G4, so it's not from 1994. It's from I say 2005 or 2008, 2005. So, yeah, we'll get all this cleaned up, re-greased, and then reassembled. We'll take all these wheels off, take the dust caps off, give these a good scrub. Okay, so to take these off, the wheels, it's literally four little prongs in the back. Just push them out. Try not to bend them, okay, because you'll mark your edge, edge casing. Take these off, soak it in a little bit of centre screw in the middle, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then we'll unscrew those wheels, take those off. To take these wheels off, quickly show you. Okay, we take the hub caps off, so we get a screwdriver, just push that off, and it literally is this pair of circlips, circlips to undo the circlip, and that wheel will pop off. Okay, you can get replacement wheels as well, and um, what you'll find is the rubbers will wear down over time. Um, my G4 I had to change it because obviously you could start seeing the plastic, it wore down. Um, obviously if you're using it on hard, hard services, don't have the tech drive on because it will wheel spin and that will wear your rubber down even quicker. Okay, but yeah, that's how you take the wheels off. So we'll take those hubcaps off as well anyway. And then I'll show you how to get the wheel off like so. So the hubcaps are off, ready over there to be cleaned. So circlips, literally slot those in just to release the circlips. That much crap in there, I can't see. One, two, come on, release. I hate these clips. Prefer the G4. Especially if you haven't got good lighting, your eyesight's sort of deteriorating, and it's a bit. Same. Okay, but you get those clips in, okay? I'll come back to you when I've got the clip off. Okay, so I just moved it to well lighted area so I could slot it in. So then you literally, they are, these are self opening and then it comes off and it's dropped off again. Let's go back to the area. Okay. So yeah, doing a well lit area and then it's literally like that, okay? Try not to lose them. There. Okay, and then these wheels just pull off. So what we'll be doing is lubricating behind here and behind here. You never ever ever lubricate there because that's what does your tech drive adjustment. So never ever put any grease or anything in there. So get that off and I'll undo the other one. So I'll put that over there to clean. Um, basically with your wheels and that I'll just soak them in the in the laundry sink with a bit of uh, soapy water okay so you can this one will probably come off there you go this one's come off with these because i can actually see that one okay so put that one there again keep them together and that wheel pops off okay so you can see it needs a good clean behind there so that's ready to be washed okay so with these you find that prong, there it is, there, push. Okay, what I tend to do is use a little Torx bit, because you can actually get the centre hole of it on the prongs, just to push off these dust caps. So, when I've got it released, I'll quickly show you how it is. So, turn it again, on there.
three. And last but not least, number four. That's there. Come on, you bugger. Like I say, my only advice is try and do it in a welded room. Um, obviously, my lighting is not the best in here. Okay, let me just undo those. Like so, and those wheels will pop off, ready for cleaning. Okay, so that comes off. Put that bolt back in so I don't get confused. And then what I tend to do is keep that with the brackets. Okay, so I'll just get this other wheel off, ready for cleaning. Okay, so this one came off 10 times easier. Obviously a bit cleaner so I can actually see the things. Alright, so again, torque screw in the middle. Okay, and just keep that with the other one. Okay, so the wheels are off. See, so they're just a bit, bit grimy inside. But then we'll be like brand spanking new. Apart from slot wear when we fill cleaned it up. Alright, so next up is we take this apart here. <clears throat> okay, so we need to crack that because I presume that, that that screws into the plastic attachment. So that's a little bit corroded. Okay, now I've got to crack this. So to do that, you literally got to get a screwdriver in and try and crack it apart. There we go, just in the top. That's the easiest part. And as you can see, it's coming apart. There we go, and there's the original. So it's never been done. So that's the original Kirby silicon around there. All right, this comes out. Normally, there is a load of crap, which there is, behind there. So that, ugh. okay. I'll throw that, clean that, throw that in the bin. Okay, so we're going to put this in the sink, give that, give that a good soak, all the plastic bits, and then we'll back to put it back together, guys. Okay. So all, right, all that's soaking in the sink. So what I forgot to show you, guys. Is we're going to take the head apart. So again, we'll put that there. That's the, we'll put all that into soak. Take the rubber off. So give that a nice good scrub. Get that clean. Yeah, it's disgusting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Give that a clean. Take the brush out. Now these come off, and you tend to get bits of fluff from that around there and debris so we're going to clean all that clean all inside there or as these bearings get bearings get gobbed up uh, we're going to use a scrub so again just take those off those go to wash i'll wash and scrub this we'll see how that belt's doing we'll check on that belt if not we'll fit a new belt um this okay just undo that and in there's one center bolt put your finger in the middle to hold it now there's two washers on the outside just to give you that tension so that comes off Ugh. as you can see you get crappy on there and all in there okay so that can go to be washed so that's on the inside okay that's on the inside and then you've got two you've got a flat washer and a bent washer that goes on the inside Okay, so I'm going to come put it all back together. Get those to wash. Wash this. Scrub this. Ugh. Okay. Also, we take off our belt. Bring one little screwdriver. Flips, flips, flips. 
So that's our belt adjustment. So we just take that off. So we don't want to soak that in water, we just want to clean it. So we'll do that. That comes out. Okay, we'll give that a clean. Give this, get this soaking, give it a scrub, get it all polished up. And uh, yeah, back okay, so here we are guys, everything's soaking in the sun. Just with some fat liquid. Can't see a lot because of the bubbles, but it's all, all soaking in there. So then what we'll do is just give it a good scrub. Try to get it all nice and dry. Um, and then start getting it all greased up and assembled back together, which I'll go through the process in a minute. Okay, see you in a bit. Boys, welcome back. Um, we've just scrubbed everything so it's all spotless as new. Removed any debris. Um, obviously I've got to polish this up. So there's a little bit of corrosion at the top, which will get polished up and I'll quickly show you how to do that. But yeah, it's all clean inside. Over to here, so we've got the uh, motors all been cleaned, blown out of the compressor. Um, I've still got the um, height adjustment to, to clean up, get rid of that rust and a bit of the tech drive to clean up, get that in the, with the compressor blown off and then obviously polish these up. But yeah, I'll get back to you once I've cleaned all that. Also, I'll quickly show you as well, we're going to undo these. So on here, um, I'm going to do it off camera anyway, but on here there's four screws. So there's two screw, a screw there, where my finger is, one the other side, if I can get you, one there as you can see. Okay, so you undo those two. You need to undo that bracket there which lifts off, and then that will come off with it. This will come off, it's on like a hinge. So I'm going to take all that off, so I can take this off purely because it's easier to polish the top part of the light fixture without getting all black on this plastic attachment so and as well as that we can clean inside where the bulb is and that um, so yeah we're going to get all that part I'll show you when it's a part off cam on camera um, so yeah catch you soon right, guys welcome back so that's all clean I've cleaned all the tech drive so again that's spotless um, To show you these, you can get replacement rubbers for the front of your Kirby, they're just adhesive on. The other one, the old ones, they do get dented in that. The one on this one isn't too bad, so the seal's pretty good. Um, but yeah, you can literally get a pack of these off um, from, from the States, which is where I get them from. Um, but they're well worth it. Obviously, if you're losing a seal at your head, then obviously you're not getting full suction on your Kirby. But yeah, just thought I'd show you those. So we're not going to fit any of those anyway this time. Um, Mainly it's from the G6 onwards, I think, that require those. It's a different, it's a very, just a rubber seal on the G5 and the G4 and the G3. So today, obviously we're going to be using some silicon sealant. When we put that together, we'll come back to that. But we're going to change the bushes in this. So I've got a load of bushes. So we'll grab out two, and they're quite simple to change. So there's one. Oops. Take two. There's two. Okay, and it's changed bushes. It's literally a case. Clip it, unclipping that. Pull that off. Like so. It's a cable toy, that's a bit of an nightmare. Pull that off. Okay, and there's a little Phillips screwdriver in there. Now just be careful not to thread it when you're doing it back up. So, I'm going to put my little screwdriver back. There we go. So, we'll see how bad these are. I mean, it's worth changing them anyway. I mean, I changed my G4, um, and they they were worn down, but G4s just work, it's still working. So if the Kirby doesn't work, obviously, those aren't, there's not a lot there. So you've lost, Probably a third of it, so it's worth putting some new ones in anyway. I mean, I'll give these to the client anyway. So put that back and literally push your bush in. Do that one a bit. A bit of a pain with the spring helps me. I'll push it back in. So the spring can catch on there, so just pull it back a bit and it'll push in then. Like so. Just tends to catch in that groove. There we go. Okay, so to get this in now, we've got a little notch. So we just line that little notch up with the notch in the top. 
So get your bush in, push it in, line that notch up there, and then push it down. Okay, and then literally put that self-tapping screw back in. Like so. So this is still run, ready to run for another 20 years plus. Don't over tighten it because they are threaded. I mean, they will thread. It's bacon, it's back on, keeping your wire. And then this side's exactly the same. So, just what we'll do so you can unscrew that. Might be easy to just unscrew it because there's a bunch of wires cable to it. See it? So, we'll unscrew that. And again, it's just a twist as it twists out. Like so. And then it pops your bush and we'll see how good this one is. What we say, there we go. So we'll pop that out. <coughs> Check that one, that's a new one. So again, it, it's lost about a third of it, which isn't too bad. But sometimes you can not change these, and sometimes these can just wear down to about there. I think it's the tension on the spring and they're not, they stop, this Kirby stops working. So if the Kirby stops working nine times out of ten, it's your bush. Come on. I hate these springs. I'm trying to get the lights. Let's just see what I'm doing. So you I'll just get another push out. Get them back in and get the yeah. the one already. No, maybe not. I'll try this one. There we go. Come on. Good. Go on. Yeah, you want it. Been a pain as well. Right. Stop you while I get this in. Okay, so all it was was a case of pressing my form against there to push that spring in. Alright, so this one's exactly the same. So, what we'll do is we'll put that clip in first. Alright, down. She doesn't pop out. That's it, push her in. Locate that lug, put her back in, and then just put your Phillips screw back in like so. Okay, off camera I did give the armature a bit of a clean. I was going to get it wet, but just give it a bit of a clean with a rag, anything just to get that carbon off there. Okay, and it's that's pretty clean anyway. Right, so that's the bushes done. So next up is the fan, which I'll what can I do first? I might come back to that because I'll show. Yeah, what I'll do with the fan is I'll fit that last because I'll show you guys how to change your fan. If you just want to change your fan, you haven't got to take all your Kirby apart. You can just take the front off. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get it all back together and I'll fit the fan last so that you guys can see that literally you've just got to break the seal on the silicon you can get to the fan just take the, the top off your Kirby get a 10mm spanner on here and then undo it okay so we'll get to that in a minute so back in a sec alright guys we're looking back so what I'm going to do is start getting this baby back together so do let's put that in there so that literally slots in there so, oops, watch your fingers. Okay, and that's in. All right, so make sure that, that earth wire is on the left-hand side, and it goes under your motor. So, just there, it goes on top. So, if you, I don't know if you guys can see. So, just on there. Okay, you need the grease in a bit. So, to hold this in, those two 
with the washer on it. Okay, so I pull that through your earth strap. Okay, and then we'll tighten that down. Just uh, what I tend to do is just do everything loose for now, and then I'll tighten them up really tight after because I've still got to get myself tappers in as well. So Okay, so that's those two self tappers, da 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 da, there we go. Those go to the bottom, just in there. Okay, I've got labour off the front, so those out. All right. Not bad. It's just cool to the end. So we've put the two in the back, so now we need to put the two in the bottom. Now just remember it's the two short self tappers. So screwdriver, it's not Phillips, me Torx. So it's two short ones, and they literally go in there. These, but now remember these were the ones that were a little bit loose, so I'll just get those tightened up. Like so, okay, then we're going to put <coughs> the exhaust fan back in. Okay, so you've got your little plastic clip. On the centuries, this is pre-installed into the base. Um, obviously the base on the centuries is plastic now, as opposed to cast aluminium. I prefer the cast aluminium. I, don't, I think Kirby just changed it for cost. But I think the cast was a lot, lot better, a lot stronger. Yes, it's a little bit heavier, but I just think it's a lot stronger. So then we've got this. So you make that open side up, and that literally just slots in the hole there, like so. Okay, then we get our exhaust fan. Now remembering there's a little Phillips screw, so this is a pain in the bastard. There they are, sorry. Okay, so that just slots in, screw side at the top, slot that in your exhaust hole, and that will hold that in place. Alright, so we've got a little tiny Phillips screw, which is there, and that just goes in the top, in there, just to hold it in situ. Okay, take your fingers, there we go, push it in, push it down, damn it, doesn't pay to have big hands. Okay, we just tighten that up, that's that bit there, okay, so that's that, alright, whoops, I'll put that back in after, right, so we're going to get our wires and put our wires back on. Okay, so start off with your bottom one. Okay, then push number three on, which is that one. It's very tight in here. Okay, 
make sure that that wire to your bush is clipped in as well because it just makes it a bloody night there to get in. There we go. Okay, so then push number three on. It goes in there. It's that one. And number two. That one. Okay, and then yeah, number one. Okay, just like so. That's that. Put that bush one back on, which has come off. And again, like I said, just make sure that's clipped in to that little plastic clip. Like so. On. Just make sure that's clipped to the bush. There we go. So she's home like that. Okay, so that's all four. This one, as you remember, will cable tie. It's only a loop, so it will cable tie back to the uh, light headset. So we'll get on to that next. So the headlight assembly, let's stitch through those screws which I showed you earlier. So what we'll do, just undo those. Quite small torques. So again, unscrew that. Unscrew there. Now don't try and pull this out. You've got to release that hinge. Okay, otherwise you're going to snap something or bend something and it's not going to sit correct. So there's your two little torque screws. Okay, let me undo this hinge. So, and this is purely just to polish it. Obviously, you need to change headlamp bulb. It's exactly the same process. But I've found with generations, the headlamp bulb, the original generations, the headlamp bulbs seem to last, and the LEDs seem to blow. Um, so I've got a bulb in my G4, still 25 years old and still running strong. Okay, so that just lifts out. There's a little plastic clip there, it just lifts out. Like so. Okay. And then you can lift that off. Like so. So that comes out of there. Oops. All in bits. Okay, well, it's all broke. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So someone's obviously wrenched that back. Too far. No. This is just two little prongs. There we go. So you just literally press there and out that comes. Okay, so then that again, headlamp ball. I mean, light is literally a clip. Again, it's that. Just push. Push down there and then that will pop out like so. So that's ready to polish. Okay. Now, let's quickly show you how to polish it. So, we've got two options. You can use Maguire's, you can use Auto Glim Metal Polish. Again, I'm not sponsored by Auto Glim or any other company. Or I prefer Auto, Auto Sol. So, and I tend to use the aluminium one. I just find that a little bit better. So, literally a little bit, less is more. Okay. Literally round in circles. Can use a buffer machine if you've got one. Okay, but obviously, I'm not going to show you polishing everything, but this is literally all I used to have to do when I was demonstrating for Kirby. The black of the cloth, the better. So you can see it's black, buffer up. And you'll get, and you see the difference between the side, you get that mirror finish. Okay, so I'll come back to you when I've polished everything up. So we've polished that up, so we're just going to pop the light back in. Like so. Fiddle away with that. We're going to pop that back in. So I 
can pull that ball there actually and pop the back and left out. Okay, so pull that ball there, it will make it a bit easier. in there, pop the top half on. Like so. There we go, in there. Slots in there. Let's make sure that's flat. That's not flat. Right. Get this back how it was. I don't know if you can get. You should be able to get these parts from Kirby, but obviously I haven't got one. So let's just go back. There we go. How it was. All right, back guys. So clip that back under there. that goes over your wire then get your hinge in which is proven to be a nightmare and because one little plastic thing has split down the middle once the hinge is in place it should so it's only a spacer it should hold it Just had it in and then I moved it. There we go. So that's in there. Don't move. Moved again, damn it. It's got it. Get that. Just clips in. Like so. Then we get our hinge clip. Put that over there. We're going to get our little screws and we're going to tighten those in just to hold our hinge plate in. It's got that. Right, make sure this is clipped in, which it is, and as you can see, I'll just give that a wipe after. Just got a bit of black off my fingers, but there's no black in there. So, we're going to put these in now just to hold our headlight case in. And the best bit with them is get my torx bit first and then try and get it in the hole. There we go, get it in and tighten it off. Okay, so if you've got small fingers, it's pretty easy. Okay, and this one, if you've got big fingers like me, it can be a bit of a nightmare to get them exactly dot. ready to go back on. So next up, 
Oh, sorry guys. So guys, just a quick one. Uh, make sure, obviously if you haven't made a note of the wire colours, then obviously do as you're taking it apart. But when you're wiring this back up, you've got black and grey on the top. Second one down, you've got a loop. So the second one down is your red and grey. And then obviously that loops over to your switch. Then you've got your yellow and grey. And then on the bottom, you've got green and grey. Okay? So it's black and grey, red and grey, yellow and grey, and then green and grey. And that, that's your order of your wires, just in case you didn't make note before you took it apart. Okay, so we've done that. I'm going to get this light switch back on. So, let's take this. Got to try and get this bottom one straight through, plugged in to just below the bush. Now, what I tend to do is take the bush out. I just find it easier. Get it in and then put the bush in. Which doing now, as you guys can see. So take that out. I'll we'll clip that wire for the bush. I'll we'll take the bush out. Perfect. I'll we'll clip the wire that loops to the bush. Like so take your bush out, there we go. Okay, that way then you can get this bottom one in on the spade connection to where it's gotta go. Like so. Just run on one in, let's see. This is all movement. loop we'll put the other wire back in as well so this one goes in the top if you guys can see it's just there so I might zoom back a bit so you can see okay so it just goes in there okay now if you remember that we like that. Keep this one on the outside so you don't want to catch on the motor. Oops, I've just pulled the bottom one off again so I have to put that back on. But yeah, once you've done that, we're going to cable tie that back up to there like we did earlier. So I'll just get, I'll just take this, pause this, and I'll get this wall clip back on. It's back on. So again, just locate these. Also. And we want those two long bolts, which I'll put right there, don't forget. Two long bolts, there we go. Two. Ah, no, don't put those in first. I've got to put those in after. So you get short bolts. Okay, we'll cable to that more up in a minute. Because we've got to put the front casing on, so we'll put the fan on. Then Bolts. Why 
one. So, so again, try not to thread it because these are just into aluminium. You put a bit of torque on them. Some people use ratchet drivers. I don't like them because they tend to round it off. So I just prefer hand screw drivers. So now that I'm just going to re cable tie that on there. So I'll go and get another cable tie. So we're just going to cable tie this again. Down there. Push that around there. Okay. That's going to look like that. And we're just going to cable tie it off. And that's it, so that's out of the way. Put the excess off. It just makes life ten times easier, so that's all out of the way. Right, next up is our tech drive. So got it fully assembled, ready to go to grab the get the front on. So we'll get the tech drive, I'll show you to lubricate it, and let's get the wheels back on. So, so with our wheels, literally, we'll put the rag. I literally put a little bit of 3 in 1 just in there obviously too much will attract dust so you just want enough just for your wheels to spin ok so light lubrication not too much just wipe the excess off ok then we're going to put this back on so this is a flat part so you aim that flat part there and it goes Push the axle through and over here we have our little split clips. As you can see, you can see the little it's flat bit at the top, that goes on the flat side. So just hook it over, push it in, press it down till it clicks. Just make sure that wheel doesn't come off because if that comes off with your hub cap on, you're gonna end up losing the split clip. Okay, so that's fully on, that's not fully enough. Okay, we'll do the other side. Again, get our split clip. Where the two prongs are. So again, I don't know if you can see. Two little prongs. That goes on the flat side. Then so just push it over. Make sure it's clipped in. Sounds like it's clipped. And what I tend to do just get me little pincers just to move it see if it will turn round if it will turn round it it's normally in the slot so you can do that on both sides and make sure it's not coming off again I'll do this side I can actually see the holes now where when we took it off I couldn't so that that's fine okay well caps just line them up with the little grip with the little holes In. Obviously, make sure your hands are clean. I'll still give you some white paper with some Windex after so that's on. So, I this one. Push those in. Like so, that's on. Okay, now what you've got to do is lift that, keep that bar up when you feed this in. If you remember our belt, our belt stays flexible. Okay, so what we're going to do, in fact, while we're here, a little bit of lubrication just on there. Walk the excess off. Okay, and that belt goes on there. So you hold that up. Nearly forgot the other part. So, got this bit and to put the other bit there. Okay, so this pulls in there, that square bit goes over there and twists and locks in place. So you have to put that through the hole first as you twist it. And when it's down, that should be in line. So, before we put it in, what we're going to use 
is just a bit of wheel bearing grease. Don't overdo it, it's just lubrication, not it's not gonna get hot. So I'll literally get it. So I'll take that bit off again. So I can show you. Okay, so I'm gonna put a bit on that and a little bit on there where that's going to slide in and out that's it just scrape the excess off okay and that is just literally all you need you don't need loads loads is just too much and the dust will get attracted okay so then we put our little peg in our hole twist it and on it goes make sure it's in drive well it doesn't get yeah, make sure it's in drive and we're going to slot that in there like so what you'll have if you can see on the bottom is a little lug a little hole so you just go line those up so don't it's moved again All right so that's in okay so just going to line that up so that belt off now make sure that's fully forward so make sure it's in drive and you're going to slot this this part here just next to that shaft okay and then it goes all right then we've got our little lock lock, yeah, yeah. lock not in place we're going to grab our three little screws bushes and everything to do here okay we'll put the lid back on that grease because i don't think we need that anymore or two in one I will need the uh, grease actually. So, there we go. Um, okay, so again, like I said, the one with the washer, I'll to adjust my arm. I'm just going to put that, get that to locate. There we go. And tighten it up. Like so. Okay, that's it. And that should activate in and out. I don't know if you can see that with these. Okay, so we keep that in drive, put our belt over, lift up our Kirby casing, hold that bar up. So again, we've just got to get that to line up with your wheels. It's a little bit tricky, but there we go, she's gone up. Okay, now just make sure that bar so that's for your power switch, make sure that's you can get up, which you can. Okay, now once you're up, that's actually sliding, you're still gonna have to drop it out of it to get this belt on. So, what I tend to do is drop it down, get my belt on on the big roller. So I have to pull that wire after. There you go. Hook it over your middle one so it's hooked. Then again, keep that out of the way. Wiggle it to the axle lines up and slots in place. Like so. Like so. She's in. Then all we do is lift her up and we've got our three bolts which are going to go in there, one there, two and one down the bottom, three. Simple as that. You can put the fan on before, but I thought I'd just show you guys. Obviously, if you've got to change your fan, you don't have to strip the whole Kirby down to do that. So, that's that.
Okay, and then that works fine. Right, so next da, 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 da. we can get our power our switch, put our switch back in for now. So lift that. We're gonna lift this bar up. And that literally pushes in the end of that plastic there. Put that down. And then what I do, not too much. It's only slight movement, it's not there's any plastic anywhere in the middle. So just a little bit of grease just for that. And that's it. Beautiful. So next we've got we've got to put our tech drive in. Um our tech drive just now. So again, just a clean rag. Okay, so if you remember these, just make sure they're clean. Get your bearings. Make sure those are clean. There's no left or right, so not an issue. Okay, and there's no forwards or backwards on this, it goes either way. So just make sure there's no grease, no grime, no bits. Okay, so what we're going to do then is get our three in one. And literally a smidgen. I'll just put a smear in there, smear there, keep that facing up, smear there, smear there. All right, drop our bearings in. Like right, so. Now put a smear, smear. You can always add a bit after. Like so. Oops, don't want to go everywhere. And all we do. Slot it together. All right, not so. Not funny. So I'll turn that one round, surely, because I can see where the screws will be on the top. Not that one will be on the top. So drop that in there. Not so. Okay. I'm going to put these in, but we're not going to tighten them up. If you remember what I said before, we don't want any left or right movement. We're just slightly loose, not tightened up. Just nip them, don't tighten them. What you want is free movement, but you don't want left and right, which we've got a bit. So this is what this is for. So our spacer goes in there. And we just adjust that down. So what I'll do for now, I'll take it off because I've got to get a spanner in there to do the fan. Put this on for now. Okay, now these, when you put these back in, you want to make sure that bolt's central to the hole. And if you look, there's a little slot there that actually slots on here. Okay, literally on the front hook. So slot them on the front hook. That's why it's easy to take this off, otherwise, you'll be kind of a nightmare trying to get your tech drive in. Again, we're literally putting this on just to check we've got no left or right movement so we can get the tech drive set up. Oops, so make sure that's central. Tighten like that up. Now, as you can see, that moves. So, all we do. Tighten this down and 
until we've got no there we go no left or right movement and that's tight enough all right make sure as well the bearings and everything is centralized so everything should be centralized okay now I'll turn that back off Okay, I'll take that back off purely because I've got to put the fan on. So we'll get everything else to send first. I just wanted to set up that actually. Well that's set up. I'll take that off, doesn't matter. We've set our spicer. So take that off. Our four external bolts now, now we can tighten those down. All come up now. Our tech drive is set up. Okay, nice and tight, and that's still got three movement. All right, and I'll do is put a bit of three and one in there again, just into the bearings. Put the excess in, okay, and then wipe the excess off. Sweet. Right, so I'm back. So what we're going to use to get rid of that corrosion is a bit of oil wool, not sponsored by Sifa or Bonnings, anyone like that. Okay, you don't need loads. Grab some auto salt. I'll just do the one bit and then I'll polish it up off camera the rest of it. So a bit of oil wool and we're just going to go around and around and around. It's easy to do this before you reassemble the head because you don't want to be getting any on your plastic attachments. You don't need to use oil wool if there's no corrosion on here. It's just purely to get that shine back and get rid of that corrosion. But it's got to be fine oil wool. You don't want coarse. If you've got any deep scratches in here, um, then all you use is some wet and dry and sand those scratches out. So start off with some 500 and then work your way up to 3000 and then finish it off with your water wall and your auto saw. I'll do this one and then the rest just literally to show you guys how to do it. Sides. Obviously wear gloves, I haven't got gloves on at the moment. I don't wear gloves. Okay, I'm going to literally buffer up. Obviously the very bottom isn't that important as your bumper goes up to it. But I've got to go over that a bit more. Brazing Z. It brings it back to that mirror finish. So any corrosion, as you can just see a line there where the bumper goes. Just go over it again with some oil wool. So I'll get back to you when I've polished it up and I'll show you how to reassemble it. So we're back guys, so this is all polished up now, so we're just gonna reassemble it. So we've got our sensor for our bush roller, which we're just gonna slot in. Now that just slots through the top, you've got a locating pin there and if you look in the back here we've got two, a screw hole and a locating pin. So locate it in the top, like so, and then push it up 
It's only a rock of rubber and then located in that pin. All right, and we've got a self-tapper. Just goes in there to hold it. And just turn it with self-tapper to hold it. Simple as that. Okay, hands clean. Again, put a bumper surround. Also clean. So we're going to put a bumper surround on. First, now after, don't trap your fingers, it hurts. Okay, any smudges you get on aluminium, you can buff up after with just a clean rag. So, again, make sure that's on nice and tight. Okay, just get the other bits for the brush. So, again, with these, you've got a big size and a small size. Um, to go on your brush roller, so check on your head if it, it fits. So, obviously, the bigger side is where your brush roller is, and that's your sensor. So, the bigger side, which is the white one, just clips on there, yep. and that one just clips on there. Like so, okay, um, got one of these, I'll put a new belt on. In fact, I'll put that belt on there. And there. Okay, so we'll put a new belt on. There we go. Okay, now what we're going to do is put all this back together. So we want the handle. So if you remember before, the handle was all yucky. It's all nice and clean and new. New looking anyway. Okay, so we've got our screw, we've got our three washers. Okay, so if you remember, the plastic attachment there goes in the back. Like so, and you've got a big end and a small end. And that's going to locate with that when it's in there. Okay, so your big end is small, and if you look on here, you've got a big and a small. We're going to locate that in there, like so. Then we put our bed washer on, then we put our straight washer on. Alright, then what we do is get a hook, okay, that way around. And we get that, like so. And the handle, this part's going to locate in those three points. Yeah, it's going to get screwed. Locate that in. Locate it into there. Do that. Oops. Just come out. Just find our screw. So that's in. That's going that way. And what you can do just locate that screw first and we can look through the back so we put your finger on it get it to locate and don't over tighten it once it's located which is not okay we'll do it again if that out and get that in line there Bit of a pig if you've got big hands. Okay, then a straight washer. Okay, so if, as you can see, well, if you can see, yep, yeah, like that. Okay, get that roughly central. Like I said, uh, these things here are going to locate with that metal bracket. So it just goes on the inside. Oops, all the way around would help. Centering is a lot easier because it's been rained. Plus, I haven't got much stain on it there. So, try again. That's it, line it. There we go. 
So as you can see, it's lined up with a hole. I don't know if you can see that. All right, you feel it clip in place. Put your bolt in. Tighten your bolt loosely. Look through the back. If you can see that, just double check. It's a bit dark, but it's located. Okay, but I can see it has. It's located with the three points. And then we tighten it up. Not too tight, should only push it. And then that should work. Okay. Shouldn't be loads of movement, but should be a little bit nice and flat. Okay. So now we're going to stick our brush roll in. Now to line our brush roll up, this needed winding down, so I'll whack it on two again and see how we go. check it okay so it's on two at the moment I think it needs warning down to three because I think it's already on two let's get our car plate on push this on lock that on in place now to check it gotta check bristles are below this so what we do is to get a straight edge and if we check them are roughly just past it so they are warm so they want that one's winding down to number three to give it the most efficient so turn that to three and pull that spin out and turn that onto three oops Can't get it out, just move the belt once, pull it out. So one that one to three and two and three and three. And what you should have is three little notches as well. Okay, so again push that down, make sure your rubber's on properly, make sure your rubber's not hanging over the edge, it's actually hooked on. Put your floor plate on, locker in place. ready to rock and roll. So once that's wound up, it should.
Again, we just check that. Okay, so it should be about two or three mil past there, which it is, and it's hoist point. Okay, so that's sweet. So that's that. So, guys, welcome back. Um, just a quick one. I'm just going to polish this up now, um, as you can see. It's all corroded, so we'll get that one polished, and uh, then we'll get back to show you how to fit the fan. Okay, okay, guys, welcome back. So we've uh, we're about to fit the fan now. So as you can see, this is all clean. Um, this is all clean. You have to make sure you clean all the old silicon off. So all the old grey silicon's gone. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a bead of new silicon around it. So what we'll do, there's the old fan, and then the bits came off it. So we'll put it into one side, and got our new fan. And our new assembly bits. So. First we'll put our seal on, so what I'll do is just apply the tiniest bit of grease in there, okay. just to get a seal, yeah, try to get my fingers, and we'll put our rubber seal on, slide that on, push that in. Working the excess grease, like so. Okay, and I'm going to get my plastic washer, then our fan. Oops, didn't actually see that. Did it? Okay, so I'm going to do it again. Okay, so what we've done. Just put a little bit of grease in here because then we're replacing our fan. Then we put in our seal and our metal bracket, it make a washer on. Then goes our plastic washer, then goes our fan, then our metal washer, and then our clamp. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just tighten her up lightly, and then I'll get a 10mm spanner and tighten her off. So just tightened anti-clockwise. Sometimes you hold you can just hold the fan sometimes but it's easier to just get a 10 mil spanner on the back. So what I'll do it's gone. So I'll just get So that's going to be a major toy. Okay, we'll just 
control it to just nip it up. Like so. Our fan. So next up, what we're going to do is just get a bit of silicone. Oops, let's move this. I'm going to put a bead. In fact, we'll do it around this one. Let me put that on. So you don't need it on both, but we're literally sealing just around. I normally go around the bolts as well, just to stop any airflow escaping. Now you're going to want to leave it to cure as well. You're just going to go all the way around. Again, I tend to go around the bolts. Bolt slow. You can just use normal silicon, this is just the silicon that came because I buy the kits with the actual silicon. So I'll just get them from Kirby. Not so. Oh, stinks. So this goes back in there. Okay. And what tends to happen, as I say, I think you seen earlier. All the crap gets stuck behind that. So that goes in there. What we're going to do is just line this up. And on she goes. Okay, now your two self tappers, that's together. Two self tappers go in the bottom. It is easier if you've got the wheels still attached, but obviously we took the wheels off. We're going to attach them last. Um, snip them up lightly. Move them over. Tighten these. We get silicon oozing out. So what I tend to do is turn it upside down. So that when it oozes out, it's not going all over where I'm working and I've got a chance to wipe the excess off. That's that. And then you've got your that one there which just secures this to the back. Again, like so. And while it's upside down, get a little bit of rag. Piece. Okay, just put the excess silicone off over there, and all that. That way, then we can assemble our wheels while it's going off. So, our axle, okay, and we've got our tub adjustment here. So, what we've got is we're going to need. A little bit of grease with that bit of rag, just want that off. Get that clean. Okay, and we're going to put a tiny bit of grease just in the end of that. Like so. Push that spring in. Okay, and also we're going to want some grease 
just in there. And just remember, grease attacks dust, so you don't want loads, you just want a little bit just to lubricate it because you don't grease all over your carpet. Okay, that's one excess off. Now, to get this in, what I tend to do is I get that, I put a bit in there as well. Just to allow it to move. Okay, excess out. Alright, so push that in. I'm going to push that up, hook that on there. Sure. Hook it on and clip that in. That then holds its own. Hold so. Okay, then we put our brackets back on. Hold them and then we'll find we'll put our feet uh, wheels back on. And we're nearly done. So tighten like that one up. Put that bracket on. That's just out of shot. So we'll lay that second bracket. Greasy. Okay, so that's that. So now we've got our wheels. We're just going to put our wheels back on. back on so just make sure you line them up. Spin around so you can see. Line them up. Done. Done. Okay and we're nearly there. So that's the fan fitted. So all we've got to fit now is the top back on. Tech drive bit. And that's it, so give me two seats just to tidy the place up and then I'll finish off and show you how to connect all that back together. I'm going to tidy up with a bit guys, so I've got the head, put the head back on, it doesn't really matter. Make sure they're central. So, get it to one so far, and then we'll move that to roughly in the middle. Difference between 
the ultimate G. And the goal of this shot is that switch. Right, so turn this down. Get the screwdriver. Okay, so I'll just put these two screws in. change that and I haven't got them in stock so um, that's something pretty simple and like that kind of hard to change and about, if you need a new new wire about $65 from Melbourne or if you get from the States you can get a 110 one which is exactly the same cable you just have to change the end um, right. so push that in Again, try not to thread it. It is just aluminium. So here's the final screw to go back in. We've still got the two tape ones at the front, which we're going to put in. Okay, put this clip, make sure those clips are on so they don't break them. Again, put your wire under, the way around. Just locate the hole, what we'll do is lock that in. But that might need just in. So just take that off again. Just bring this in a bit. Okay, we'll come back to that back in a sec to check it's all working. Okay, so let's try this. Let's put a dirt meter on for that. Yeah, works well, a treat. 
and there you have it, one complete Dorman Edition G7 fully restored and uh, serviced. Hope you enjoyed the video guys and uh, yeah if you liked it hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell and there will be more videos coming up. Um, let me know if there's anything you want to see Kirby wise, anything, any, anything repaired or anything like that. Um, yeah. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.